Hello nieces, hello nephews, it's your Uncle Charles here and welcome back to my YouTube channel where we do unbiased price action analysis. And holy moly, did the plan work out well guys. Uncle Charles talked about the chop range yesterday, 417.5 to the 420 level with 418.2 in the middle, that's the Fibonacci level. Oh boy, you know we talked about how we need to break up the range to get a decent move, level to level, maybe a trend move, hopefully a trend move. And it worked out nicely guys, the low for the candle today was 413.68, very nice breakdown from the, you know, the chop range. Okay, I wrote here on my Discord, it was interesting, okay, I want to talk to you guys about the breakaway gap, okay, I wrote here on my Discord, interesting pre-market action here. SPY failed to break down 417.5 during the trading hours. I'm referring to yesterday and, and last Friday and stuff. But now attempting a gap down. Okay. This may qualify as a bearish breakaway gap. But I'd like to see SPY stay below 417.5 or 418.2 highest on any bounce. Okay. So bulls must recapture these levels to cancel the bearish breakaway gap okay so what this means was as far as this morning i was not bullish unless spy can cancel the bearish breakaway gap which means it had to recapture for 18.2 i'm only gonna look to long if i'm bullish otherwise i'll be looking to stay bearish and looking for shorting opportunities guys let me show you what i mean this is the 15 minute chart okay this is the 15-minute chart. Look at this gap down. Nice gap down, okay? This is what I mean. Support yesterday was 418.2 based on the Fibonacci level and the uh, 417.5 level. We had selling pre uh, buying pressure there multiple times, okay? You guys can see here we had a descending triangle pattern, right? So basically the plan was the breakaway gap, the bearish breakaway gap would only cancel above 418.2. It never cleared 418.2. I will admit, the morning was pretty tough to trade. You guys can see it. The morning was tough to trade. It was pretty choppy. It recaptured 417.5 in the first setup. It, you know, it went as high as 418.13. You know, um, 7 cents shy of the 14.2 level. So that's almost... Uh, a level to level move but it's more like a scalp move but otherwise you know other than that it was choppy overall it was bearish because of the bearish breakaway gap now what is a bearish breakaway gap that's usually when we have like a pattern like this a structure and the you know when we have a structure or a pattern like this this we, we get support level we get resistant levels right so you see it break below a support level that it failed to break during the trading hours it break you know it got below a support level so you want to see that gap not get filled and it could just, you know, continue to go down as long as the resistant, you know, holds. Okay. In this case, I had 418.2. I had to defend. If it was to clear, I definitely would have looked too long, but instead we didn't. Okay. It was choppy, but here's the thing I wrote here on at 1130. I mentioned it. Chop city really sucks. But despite that, the 417.5 zone continues to defend as support plan is still the same if 418.2 clears look to long with 420 ish back in play we've had 417.5 well tested now so bulls don't want to see another intraday test if it doesn't break down 416 more likely incoming guys all right and it, it worked out beautifully i wrote at 11 30 once we got that breakdown of 417.5 it was our time guys to go short and look at that beautiful move to the downside that really got out of hand fast we didn't even have to call a top we just had to wait for the right setup it was beautiful now the reason like i said in my post the 417.5 level was well tested all the buy orders were there that was there was getting absorbed you can even see on the, on the intraday it was kind of like a bear flag as well all right it was kind of like a bear flag but you know many signs okay 418.2 didn't recapture we was basing, the buy orders were absorbing, we just needed the breakdown at the right time, which I try to alert the group. And man, it just it just feels so nice when a plan comes together. Okay, now let's move on. Okay, that's the past now. Let's move on to the present and the future. 
You see where we close around 414, all right? If you watch Uncle Charter's video yesterday, where I explained how the bull market is not back, I finally said it, guys. I finally told everybody how I feel the bull market is not back. Okay, you guys happy now? Anyways, so yes, from all time high down to October low, 414 was the 50% FIB level, guys. 414, very critical. Remember, I talked about the golden zone, all right? So, signs that the golden zone has been tested. Right, we're, we're testing it now, obviously, but we still need to see rejection breakdown of the critical support level, okay? So the point is, I want you guys to see how important that 414 level, it's critical, right? I, I love Fibonacci levels because, you know, they're unbiased levels and they never change. Moving averages are cool too, they're based on math or something like that, but they're always changing every day. I like moving average, I just like Fibs better. Anyways... So yes, you guys see how important that 414 level is. Not to mention I had this bull flag here that I mentioned to the group intraday about this bull flag. Got a nice breakdown, man. That was the 416 level. All right. So to recapture this bull flag would be for tomorrow, 415 point. Uh, excuse me. For tomorrow, to recapture the bull flag would be 415.5. All right. So for if you're bullish... 414 must defend. You guys know how critical this level is. Very critical. So if you're a bull, you need to see it bounce and you'll trust the bounce better. Re recapture this bull flag 415.5. All right. To put 417-ish back in play with 418.2. And the bull flag resistant is at 419.5 is to 420 zone, guys. All right. So can't get bullish tomorrow unless we recapture 415.5 and 417. 417.5 is all right. Need to recapture some levels we broke down to the, today. Otherwise, watch for that breakdown of 414. If that if that uh, happens, all right. We got this blue trend line, okay? Blue trend line breakdown levels at 412. All right. Now here's this blue trend line. Zoom out here a little bit. It starts from March 13th low. We got a test here, May 4th, and a test here, May 17th. All right. If it breaks down 412. Woo! That's very, very bearish, guys. All right? Actually, the, the correct number, exact number is 412.3, all right? 412.3 breaks down. That's bearish. I'll target 411.3. That's a 23.6 fib level from March 13th low uh, to May 19th high. All right? 411.3, that fails. That's very bearish, all right? So basically, that zone right there, 411.3 to 412.3, support zone. Below that, be bear bias, okay? But watch out for a bounce. Don't get too bear biased. We play this level to level. All right, guys? So you guys got my uh, my plan, right? My price action plan. Below 415.5, I would, you know, be bullish again. But it needs to recapture 417.5 still. You know, we'll play this one level at a time. If 414 fails, that blue trend line in the FIB level, for uh, 411.3 to 412.3 is in play. If that fails, very bearish. I would swing puts. I would swing puts below that. All right, 4.9 would be in play. Okay, below honestly, below 4.11.3, I would favor 4.04 being tested. All right, but 4.09 would be in play first with 4.5.5 and then 4.04. I'm just saying, I would favor 4.04 being tested. Maybe, maybe even lower down to 400 or something. Okay, but I hope you guys got that. All right, I try to make the plan simple. Yesterday's plan, we just waited for the break of the chop range. And the break of the chart range, we broke down 470 per fight, led to a very nice move, okay? So that's, that's my new plan for tomorrow. Above 415.5, bullish, look too long. Below 414, would put 411.3 to 412.3 in play. Below that, I would swing puts. I would be bear bias. Bears taking over, okay? I'm not, I'm not rooting for none of y'all, okay? I don't care who wins between the bulls and the bears. I just want some volatility. You guys know how Uncle Charles feels. So let's get this money. Before I go, let's go to Triple Q first, all right? We broke down that 335.5 level, hit the 333 support level. If Triple Q wants to continue this, it needs to break down 333 and 331.5. And maybe we can back test this. Look at this pink trend line. We had a test here, test here, test here. Bunch of tests there. We broke out, led to a nice move. So breakdown level or back test level. Is at 328.5. All right, 328.5 is the breakout level. Maybe Triple Q wants to back test that, but that's a very nice move to the downside if it goes down some more. All right, 
I will only be bullish on Triple Q tomorrow if it recaptures 335.5. All right? 335.5 must recapture to be bullish and clear 337. To be bullish, to put 339 in play in higher levels. Otherwise, stay bearish below 335.5. Look to show up below 333 with those targets I mentioned. Okay? Now, if we break back below this triangle pattern, below 329, uh, 328.5, that will be a false breakout setup. Very, very bearish for the triple Q. And we could get a deeper sell-off down to 321, maybe down to 319. That's a very nice move to the downside. Okay, play this unbiasedly. Don't get too excited here, okay? Don't get too excited. IWM, you can be excited if you want. I'm just saying. Nice rejection. Nice rejection from that 38.2 fib level, guys. We finally tested it, but we got a nice rejection. That's a good sign for bears, all right? So the show follow through needs to break down 177.5, battle in there right now, and definitely break down 175. Below 175, guys, I would swing puts, all right, and target 172, 170, and 167.5, uh, right? It would be a very nice move to the downside. And we can break 175, all right? Can't get bullish unless IWM can cancel that sell selling pressure. Clear 179.6, and I would favor more upside with 183 and 187 in play, okay? Otherwise, I'm bearish right now. I just need the confirmation for IWM, okay? I mean, I mean I'm mean, i I'm leaning bearish, but I'm not, you know, I'm going to trade like a sheep, guys. Anyways, Tesla got a very nice rejection from the 23.6 FIB level. Went as high as 193. We had some pretty nice level to level move to the upside. And when Tesla decided to drop, we had an even more nicer level to level move to the downside. All right, very nice trading day today. I'm just excited. Anyways, next support is at 184, guys. Look to short. If, if Tesla wants to continue this to the downside, look to short below 184. It's going to be a beautiful move. To the downside, maybe back test that 50 daily moving average, which is around 178.5 right now. It could slope up a little bit up to 179. This is why I don't like 50 daily moving averages or any of those moving averages, but I still use them. Okay, it's, it's not about if I like them or not, it's about is it useful? It, are they useful? Yes, they are. Anyways, if it if you know if Tesla breaks back below the 50 daily moving average, I would definitely be bear bias swing puts, false breakout setup. Bah, play sheep style, even though it's a bearish trade setup. Anyways, I think I had a lot of coffee before making this video. Below the 50 daily moving average would be very bearish. Next support would be 176, 173.4. And we could possibly go test 165.6. I would favor 165.6 if the 50 daily moving average fair. Holy moly, we might get some beautiful moves. Especially if they get this depth ceiling thing situated. You know, market can make up his mind, give us some good direction. Oh, man. Anyways, look at Apple. Look at Apple getting very close to a very critical, critical uh, support level. Also, you know, it gap down a little bit too and continue to gap down. That's a good sign for bears. Anyways, this trend line is orange trend line that kept Apple in the bull market. Guys, break down level. And a bull trend, I mean, breakdown level is 171, guys. Can the Bears finally do it? Can they finally do it? And if they do it, I'm going to report it here and I'm going to have a good time doing it. Okay, because it's not that I'm bearish or anything like that, but I just believe that we can finally break down this trend line. We could get a very nice move. I just, I just believe it. All right. So below 171, I would be bear biased. Maybe we can finally fill that gap at 165.6. 165.6. I mean, before that, 168 is in route, but if 168 fail, 165.6. Gotta fill that gap. And if that fails, I'll favor 160.5 being tested. Okay, I can't get bullish unless we clear some resistance. So it could bounce here. It could bounce at 171, but I'll only trust the bounce if it recaptures. If it recaptures uh 172.5 and 174 resistant levels. To put higher targets in play, guys. DX, why the dollar is still looking fairly bullish to me, okay? There's resistance at 103.6, okay? Getting some selling pressure there. 103.6, we break out. 104.1 will be in play with 105 back in play, okay? Can't get bearish until we break down support. Starting with 103, 
to put 102.2 and 100.8 back in play. Check out the VIX. While the Spire was dropping, VIX was popping. And um, it's nice, okay? It finally closed above the 18.3 level. You guys see multiple times. VIX was just selling. It was just selling from the 18.3 level. Holy moly, poke it with a stick. Somebody must have poked it with a stick because it bounced today. Hallelujah. All right? Now, to be continue to be bulls, you see where we got that wick. We got some selling pressure from that white line. That is the 23.6 fib level at 19.14. So, to be bullish, VIX need to stay above 18.3, clear 19.14, and get above 21.3. If it breaks back below 18.3, that's a false breakout. And holy moly, VIX could drop back down, which could be a sign of the, the SPY going back up. Okay? Let's take a look at the dark pool orders guys all right we got 2.6 billion in premium at that 418.72 level holy moly guys stay bearish as long as below that level i do want to take us back to last friday last friday's dark pool was pretty cool i gotta look at it again 419.2 level we have 5.3 billion in premium at that level we had 2.5 billion in premium at the 420.2 level. We look at look at it with the charts. You know, you got to use these dark pool orders with price action. You see when these orders were coming in uh, but on, on Friday, but on Monday, lots of selling pressure from that zone. Lots of selling pressure from that zone. And now look at it look at it in hindsight. Look at it in hindsight. Those institutions were selling, man. I could be wrong, but you know, I, I, I doubt it highly doubt it anyways let's go back let's go back till today uncle's very excited today 2.6 billion at that 418.72 level all right right around there you know spy couldn't even clear that level so is that institution selling some more and foolish retails buying oh i don't know but i tell you this i'll stay bearish Below that level, if, if it can recapture it, definitely would be a good sign for the bulls. All right, now that's if we're using strictly based on dark pool orders. I use more than just dark pool order levels, but it definitely helpful. So add this level to your chart, guys, and label it dark pool levels. All right, now here's the spy filter for 500k premiums or above 57% in the puts. Okay, more puts than calls. This one's interesting. This one came in at 158 p.m. While the spy was dropping, somebody's trying to buy the dip here. Over 13,000 in size, calls 423 strike price for June 2nd. That's pretty short term right there. Okay, now here's somebody at the end of the day at 346 p.m. Holy moly, sweeps over 10,000 in size. This is 800K in premium though, not as big as the other one. 414 strike price for May 24th. All right. I don't know these this one it looked like a FOMO. Maybe it's a FOMO or they're expecting more downside tomorrow. Let's see who is right. One thing is gonna pop, one thing is gonna drop. But overall though, puts are leaning uh are more than calls. Okay, so more bearish leaning than bullish leaning. How about triple Q? More bearish leaning. All right, nothing that really sticks out, but the one that does stick out is this one over five thousand size, three point three million in premium, three thirty-five strike price. Okay, big money. It's more bearish than they are. Bullish IWM, 72% in the puts. You know, that's pretty bearish. Uh, a mixture here with the big size order. This one is called 183 strike price. They came in at 11. 183 strike price for May 26. Very short term. This one is a longer, a little more longer term. June 30th, 175 strike price for puts. Okay, but much more puts than calls today for IWM. Here's Apple, 100%. 100% in puts. There's a sweep. Here's a split. So one's weak. One is strong, but size is pretty small for both of them. Tesla, 55% in the puts. Still seeing more block orders. A bunch of uh, very, very in the money puts coming in. Uh, good amount of sweep orders coming in. Most of them are calls, but overall 55% in the puts. But those are the block orders. Um, and here is the VIX. Nothing. Nobody traded the VIX. When the VIX finally made it a move, nobody traded the VIX. Holy moly. I don't know what to say. But I will say this. Uncle Charters is doing the $500 giveaway tomorrow. And I can't wait to, 
to uh, to name the winner. I'm very excited for this. Just want to thank you guys for being with me on this journey. 500 videos. Hoo, hoo, hoo. Yay, yay. Anyways, winner is going to be announced tomorrow, so be sure to tune in. If you want more content from Uncle Charles, please consider joining my Discord. We're going to kill it on the Discord. Woohoo! Have a good day, guys. Peace.